All right, guys, well, welcome to our first consolidated call in the Agent Growth Hub. Um, via lots of feedback and lots of experience, we decided to consolidate both the launch and the build calls into one call every Thursday. Uh, we are actually really, really excited about this because I think that with the way the market is, with how tough stuff is, the more we can bring people together in the rooms and have conversations about what's actually working in the market, it's going to help everybody's business. So we are very excited to kick this off. Appreciate everybody being here. Um, for the rest of February, it will be the same link for those of you who are newer to it. Uh, we are actually going to be putting this call into Real Academy at Real Brokerage as well, but there still will be an outside link to be able to participate. So it is still broker agnostic in regards to what we're training on. Real just would like this content in their academy as well. So we are we signed on for that. So that being said, like Mike kind of mentioned before we started recording, today we're going to get really tactical on the five ways to sell more to your sphere. You want to kick us off, Novak? Yeah. Um, this is something that's really been top of mind for me for the last couple of years. You know, our team has been really heavy in online leads. Um, Rachel and I, our first year in real estate in 2017, we uh, we had no sphere. Like we were newer to the area. We were from up in Whatcom County and we didn't really have like a bunch of friends to sell houses to. So we went big on online leads and we ended up doing like 79 transactions our first year, okay, it was the two of us, all off online leads. But it, it it's not really where you want your business to be at. And online leads are great. And I think they're an important part of like the overall health of an entire team. Um, for single agents, it may or may not be necessary. Obviously for teams, providing leads is a really important value add that we like to do for our agents. Um, but it just got me realizing you know, over the last couple of years that when you sell to your past clients and your sphere, things are a hell of a lot more fun. You know what I mean? I'm not talking to somebody I don't know. Like we're already, we're already pals. They already know, like, and trust me. And so that relationship is already starting off in such a better place. And it just, to me, it's just a lot more fun. Like I, I like to work with people I like. Um, we've all had those difficult clients that we kind of wish would just go away. And when you work with your sphere, you kind of get to be choosy on who to work with and who not to work with. And so I just think it's a lot more fun. Um, I think a really healthy team is going to be 50 to 70% of their business is going to be past clients and sphere of influence for single agents. It might be like 80 to hundred percent, you know, it just depends how long you've been in this business. The longer you've been in it, the higher that percentage is going to go. Like everyone knows that we yeah. track that really closely, or at least most people do. And what we've seen is a really steady increase in PCSOI business past clients and sphere of influence since getting into real estate in 2017. Like it started at zero and then we're up to like 15%, then 25%, then 35%. And now it's in excess of 50%. So it took a long time to get there. And there's a lot of reasons it took a long time to get there. But some of those reasons are obviously buyers that you sold houses to coming back and listing their house with you. And then some of it is also just people really recognize that you're the authority in your friend space for real estate. Like when those two yes. things happen, that's where this really becomes really fun and interesting because you know the, the cost of generating past client business is much less expensive too like you're not spending thousands of dollars a month on lead gen um you should still spend some money on it like in, in my opinion it's really part of your lead generation budget it's not just like a general expense this is very intentional how we spend money and the things that we do to cultivate our sphere but the problem i see is when we talk to people about hey let's grow our sphere business they have no plan for that like they don't know what to do. They don't even have their sphere into their database. Like it's literally just mm -hmm. it's in their phone. Like it's in their iPhone right now. <laughs> you know, and if you can relate to yeah. that, um, you, you kind of know what I'm saying, right? Right. You haven't taken the pro the time to really develop a process on how you're going to do more sphere business. You just know you want to do more sphere. Like you've got no tangible plan to actually do it. And that's where the game changes. Like you have to decide if sphere is going to be a big part of your business you must treat it like any other lead source and create processes and systems that give you predictive outcomes. Outcomes that are predictable in process. And that's what we really want to focus on today, guys, is, um, you know, how do you do this? What should you do? And then, you know, we got some power players on this call too, like Jim and Ed, uh, where I'd love to hear from you guys on the things that you're doing as well that maybe we haven't talked about so that we all get the most out of today's call. Sound good? Yeah. I, I also want to add to that, that, you know, I think a lot of people get into real estate and in the first year, they're like, 
oh, even if you're from the area, especially like, oh, I have a huge sphere. Oh, everybody I know is going to, you know, want to do a, a transaction with me and they're going to want to work with me and I'm going to be slim and busy with my business. And the reality is that you haven't proven shit to anybody yet. Like you haven't proven anything to any of the people in your life. So why would you expect them to trust you without having some sort of proven results that they can now have confidence in working with you? So I think that that's a really important mindset to come into this with. And as we're bringing in and mentoring new agents, like maybe you have some sphere that are going to be okay taking a chance on you. And maybe they're okay taking a chance on you if you have a team behind you or, you know, you have a great mentor or something like that. But most people need to see a track record. They need to have the confidence that you've done the process, that you understand, and you truly can lead them through that transaction because it's a lot of money. So I think it's really important to go into that with that mindset and that the beginning part of, of your real estate journey, we're trying to like get more out of sphere. The basis of it really needs to be your own personal skill development and your own personal education on the market and continuing to voice that to people, not just celebrating the win, not just celebrating the pending and the close, but hey, this is what's going on in the market right now. This is what I'm seeing and sharing that in your stories and elsewhere, right? So you have to start building authority slowly. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, on our team, you know, if you're an agent and come into our ecosystem, one of the first things you do during match month is you create a CSV file of a hundred people that are friends of yours. Like you've got their phone number, you've got their email address, and you've got a home address for them. And then we help you upload that into our CRM. And that's the same thing that you should do as well. Like that's really step one here, guys. Make sure you have done the basic things. And that's to pull everyone out of your phone. <laughs> you can actually export everyone from your phone pretty easily and go ahead and put them into your CRM. Um, you need to make sure you've got some kind of home valuation tool running on these people as well. I recommend like a quarterly frequency. And then if they get a little more interested, change that to a monthly frequency, but make sure that you're the person providing them the home value and that they're not having to go to Zillow or Redfin or something like that. I had one of my um, like really good friends the other day tell me that he was Googling like what repairs to do his home before he lists it. And I was like, dude, what the hell are you doing? Like, you're one of my best friends. Why aren't you? <laughs> so of course I turned it into a listing appointment, went out to his house and we're going to list his house. But uh, you got to make sure that you are following up with people and you're bringing them value, like Rachel said. So make sure that you're getting people into a CRM. Sean just said HomeBot. HomeBot is a great tool. That's one of the ones that we use too. It's really interactive. It's got these cool like graphs and charts that shows them, um, you know, what's going on with their home's value, their equity, um, what the benefit of rehabbing their home could be, like doing a kitchen remodel what the benefit of refinancing could be, all of those types of things. And like Sean said, it's like 25 bucks a month. And sometimes the lenders will even like give you it for free too, because a lot of lenders use HomeBot. So that's the first thing that I want to talk about is like get your people into a database and make sure you've taken the time to do that. You should have at a minimum of 100 people. Like guys, I know team leaders. Rachel and I had lunch with one last week that was in town from... Um, Connecticut. And this dude is hardcore. He runs a team that sells 600 homes a year. And his requirement is 300 people in the first month that you know, like personally know, like they will recognize your face and you've got their phone number, their email, their home address. So you can start engaging with those people. Um, and so the, getting them in your CRM is step one. Step two, send them the home valuations. Step three, use that contact information to start inviting them to client events. Client events is the single biggest driver of past client business that we have found. It just, it, it's very successful. Um, and the reason people don't do client events is because they're time consuming, they cost money. Um, and a lot of us don't like going and networking for three hours straight with past clients, but it's actually pretty fun when you find the right kind of events that match your style. Do you want to talk about some of our events, Rachel, that we've done? Yeah, hundred percent. So, you know, we've, we've done really big events where we've had four or 500 people come, you know, rented at a ballpark, done a whole thing. That's like, that's like 10 grand. I mean, it's a lot to do an, an event like that, right. For that many people. Um, other events that we started doing just this last year and are continuing through 2024 are smaller, what we're calling VIP events. So you're renting a, a much smaller area or you have a gathering space that has a very low minimum F and B budget. And now you can invite just the people who you know, what we call them influencers in our world, but people who know, like, and trust you have, you know, provided you a referral in the past. It's basically a way to say thank you for that referral and obviously encourage more without having to ask for it. 
Um, so the most recent one that we're doing, we're, we're having a big gathering in March at the Snohomish um, Golf Center. So we rented out a couple of bays and a bunch of part of the patio, have a bartender. Like it's not going to be super expensive. It, it will be a couple thousand just because of the size of our team. But scale wise, if you're a single agent or if you have a smaller team, you don't have to go really big. You can get a room at a restaurant. You you know, like, can you imagine bringing in you know, maybe a dozen or 20 or 25 people past clients who are coming in and just kind of hanging, networking, feeding them music, there's an activity, golf, whatever. And you're not, you're not to bring up real estate. You don't ever have to bring up real estate. Guess what the first question is that they're going to ask you? What's going How's on the market? Yeah. What's going on in the market? They will always bring it up. So Mike and I have always subscribed to the mindset that we do not call and ask for referrals ever. Ever. We don't like it. I don't like it to me personally. I know some people do and it's worth, it works for them. But for me personally, it feels gross. I want to provide so much value. And then after they close, provide so much continued value going forward that they want to give me referrals because I'm, I'm the best in their eyes, right? That's what I want to do. So I think client events for sure. But I also think, you know, one thing that I started doing last year was a little bit more personalized touches, which is incredibly budget friendly. So everybody lives out loud. Now we see lives on Facebook. We see lives on Instagram. We see lives in stories. We know what's going on in people's lives. And when something of note happens to someone, it's amazing what a $25 bouquet of flowers randomly delivered to their door will do for their perception of value in of you. Right. Or I have a client that they just had their second baby and they were so excited to have their second baby in this new house that they bought. And I bought both their new baby and their, you know, toddler matching little blankets with their names on it. It was like $60, but they were like, Oh my God, like, this is so amazing. So thought like, it doesn't have to be super expensive. It just needs to be well thought out. Like that is the stuff that keep continues to keep you top of mind with everybody in your sphere. Point. Any other notes on client events? I guess we'll kind of, yeah, we can jump into those. Yeah. Well, so a lot of coaches, like I'm going to just name Tom Ferry here, like Tom Ferry's ecosystem is all about calling your past clients and asking for referrals. And that's totally cool if that's your jam. That's just not how we do business. Like that feels very self-serving to us. Um, if that's you, then, Hey, that's totally cool. You do you, um, for us, we just, we believe in, you know, giving something to people and then it comes back to us eventually. It's just been a, a better way for us to run our business. Um, and so that, that's why we take that approach, but I just wanted to, so, um, another like really great thing about the client events and a lot of people miss this one. They think that it's all about the event and it's actually not about the event at all. Like, of course, that's important to, to make connections and deepen those relationships. It's actually all about the outreach. Like the outreach is the game changer because you have a reason to reach out to your past clients. A lot of people, a lot of agents, they're like, I don't know what to say to my past clients. Like, I don't, I don't know what to do. And so they simply don't call or text them because um, they have no clue what to say. But when you give people an event to invite them to, all of a sudden it comes very easy to say, hey, Sean, how are you doing? Great to catch up with you. Hey, love to have you and the family come out to our next client event. It's on March 15th. I'll text you an event, like a bright link to RSVP. Love to see you there. Totally free for you guys. Just something we do for our past clients. You know what I mean? Like we're just giving this to somebody and then it comes back to us later, but you have to have that right mindset to do it. I think three to five client events is the sweet spot. Um, you know, if you go more than that, it kind of feels like you never have a break. Like you're just kind of moving from one to the next, to the next, to the next. Um, but one a quarter feels kind of like the right pace to me. Uh, and like Rachel said, we've done some really big events. We've done some smaller events. We're going to talk about influencers here in a little bit. Influencer events have been really successful for us too, um, where it's like really just your VIP clients and you keep it small, like 50 to 100 people. And they're able to have a really like awesome experience where it's fully catered, open bar, and they get a lot of proximity to you and more time with you like that. Those are really the, the most fun to me versus these mega events. So anything else to add to client events, Rachel, before we move on? I think just to emphasize, like having a consistent process for outreach for each event, right? Having, you know, in, in our world, you know, our, our operations team will create, you know, text templates and email templates with the links already embedded with the, you know, the graphics already embedded so that people can just go in and use that template to email the people and make, and make it as easy as possible on the agents. 
But as a single agent, like one, that's not very difficult to build out if you have a good CRM. And number two, it's also not difficult just to copy and paste Facebook Messenger and invite people, right? Like you're not going to get, but maybe 60%, 70%, if you're really lucky, are like of the RSVP show rate. And so the more people that you invite to these kinds of things, the more opportunities you have to connect with people. And I can't tell you, like it has literally happened dozens of times over the last seven years that in the midst of reaching out and just inviting people to these, somebody is looking to make a move or somebody knows someone that is looking to make a move. And we've never brought it up. We're not calling for that reason, but there it is. So that's what awesome. I had to <laughs> The first five strategies, client events. Um, if you've got questions about it, definitely throw them in the chat box and we'll hit them at the end. Um, the second one is gifting. And Rachel talked a little bit about customized gifting. Like when you know like your clients really well or you are friends on social media, you can really take this to a whole new level. Like Rachel, um, like one of her clients, their dog died. And their dog was like as close to these people as like a child. And what did you do, Rachel? You put together like basically like a photo frame of this dog and sent it to them? Yeah. So like I found on Etsy, there is an artist that takes photos and makes like watercolor paintings. And so I had this watercolor painting done. And I mean, I think same, it was like, I think $59 and then whatever, 65 shipped or something. And like it, the guy, like my client rode around with this, this framed dog picture in his truck for like a month. Like, cause he was so heartbroken about this dog. So like, like every time he looks at it, he thinks of me. It doesn't say my name anywhere. I didn't even write on a note. It didn't put a sticker of me on it. But because I had, I had that, you know, to give to him, he was like, oh my goodness, like this person actually cares about me as a person, not just this transaction that we're going through. And when you make it about the person, right, their world, their struggles, their likes and interests, it changes the game for how people see you as the authority. Yeah. So that that's, was probably the most, the most meaningful one that I've given for sure. That's my favorite form of gifting is where it's individualized hundred percent. Like you can't scale that, but you can do um, a couple of those type things per month and have a huge impact on people. Um, the other one is like, what do you do when people refer you a client? You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing to take care of that person and show appreciation for those people? If you're doing nothing, uh, you got a big problem. Like you want to incentivize the behavior you desire. So if someone refers you somebody, make sure you send it back their way and don't wait for that to turn into a transaction. Do it immediately. Like it's not up to them if this person's yes. qualified or not. Send it out right away. Like we will do like a hundred dollar gift card to a great restaurant in the, in the area they live in. Um, some people do like Amazon gift cards if they're like way outside of our markets, like down South or something like that. Um, for our like actual like influencer clients, we will take them out to dinner, like a nice, like $500 steak dinner and do like a double date and actually spend a few hours with these people. Like, especially those people that send you like three or four people a year, take exceptional care of those people. Think about the return on that investment, right? If you get four deals out of one person, that person is gold to your business. Treat them like it. Okay. Mm -hmm. We, when it comes to gifting, we also, um, we do four to five mass mailings per year. Um, Anna's on this call. She takes point on a lot of that. Um, and that that's like basically ordering in bulk a gift and sending it out to all of our past clients. Um, we'll typically send out like about 300 of these at a time. Two of my favorites, um, we had like a dishwasher magnet that was like wood and it had our logo on it and said dirty or clean. You could like flick it around to know what the dishwasher was. I've been in lots of our clients' homes since these went sent out like two years ago. They're on everyone's dishwasher. You know, it's kind of cool to see. <laughs> the other one, and uh, I, I know that this was like a combination of uh, Anna and Rachel's idea was um, the ice scraper we sent out last winter. You know, like I got yeah. some reached out it's to. It's right here. Yep. And what was in the card? And we had we had a couple of, I, I don't remember. It, it was some clever little thing that Anna found that, you know, it was, it was a play on words, basically like, um, let us, you know, we'll help you in any way we can, including scraping the ice off your car. So, you know, whatever. Um, but we had clients that had just moved from like Florida and, you know, relocation clients that had moved from other climates. And they sent us pictures of them using this as like a spatula in mm -hmm. the, the, because they've never used one before. Right. So like, it just, it became a really funny thing. Um, and then to, to touch on the kind of the customized gifting and especially the people who send you referrals, People really love experiences. So for me, it's not always about just sending a hundred dollar Amazon gift card. Like for the for the guys, the men who send me referrals or send us referrals, 
Um, I love man crates. It's one of the most fun, simple, inexpensive gifts to, to send somebody. And it kind of gives them like this little challenge to like open this crate box first. And then there's like a cool gift inside. Like there's whiskey glasses or there's coffee or there's Tabasco or jerky or whatever. So it doesn't have to be like just a gift card, right? It's because we don't want to consider it a kickback. It's a thank you. It's a thank you gift. So. Cool. Uh, anything else to add to gifting, Rachel? Or you get on that one? Um, I think that it's important to, you know, while we're talking about spending this money and doing all these things, I, I also think that it is really important to continue to be fiscally responsible about it. You know, I think Anna does a phenomenal job of really like pricing things out and making sure that we're getting good, you know, deals on, on the actual items, plus what the mailing is going to be, because it can get really out of hand really quickly, right? I mean, very quickly, especially at scale with the, with the big pass client list. And so making sure that you're doing stuff, it doesn't have to be huge. You know, Vistaprint makes keychains with carabiners and they they you know you can do very simple things that is just a little token because people just don't get a ton of snail mail anymore the only mails and packages that they're getting are the amazon boxes that they've ordered themselves that they forget what's in them so if we are sending something they didn't expect it now they open it and they have a new little something even if it's a tiny little five dollar keychain you know with a little reminder and a qr code on it like that's a cool thing you know like so it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be expensive and i and i would actually advise to not go overboard especially on those for sure but don't send shit guys like if it's not something you'd personally use don't yeah send it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not even worth yeah. it um we do do handwritten yeah. cards for all these too like you know our 14 year old daughter came in and hand wrote like a few hundred of these last mm -hmm. time um but that's a really important part as well to to put a, a personalized card in there for the people uh, number three is a quarterly call text. And if you're doing client events, this one might already be taken care of um, because if you're doing them quarterly, there's your reach out right there. You don't have to you know, have a redundancy and do it again. But if you're not doing client events, make dang sure that you check in with your people once a quarter and see how they are doing. Some people I will call, some people will be text. Most are text just because that's how they prefer to be communicated with. But there's some people, especially like the older demographic, that really just appreciate phone calls. And those are the people actually pick up the phone, check in with. Um, those they they it can feel drowning to walk into your office and have like a hundred past clients you need to call. Um, but if you just chip away like five to ten a day over the quarter, it's pretty digestible. Um, you know, this isn't like calling online leads where you can just blast out like 25 calls an hour. These are people like pick up the phone and they fill you in on like everything going on in their life. So sometimes these calls are like 20 minutes long. And so you just can't, you can't get a ton of them in per day. You know, you can get in like, you know, mm -hmm. five to 10 if you're lucky. So, um, if they don't pick up the phone, make sure you leave them a, a nice message and send them a text as well. Okay. Anything you want to add, reach to the a tip on that? Yeah, I, I definitely a tip on that, which I brought up a couple weeks ago because um, Jim and I were having the conversation about, you know, Sharon's tip about this. So I want to reshare that because, because we, everybody lives online and we know we can literally go in and find what people are doing and what they're up to and what life events have happened. When you do call your past clients, especially if you're even loose friends on Facebook, don't ask them what's new, what's the latest, right? Because you're interrupting their flow of life. When you're calling them to check in, it's, hey, I saw that you were just at Leavenworth or I saw that you were just doing this. Did you guys have a great time? What all did you like be relevant so that there there's no loss of flow on their part. You are integrating immediately into their thought process. They, you, they, they feel heard. They feel seen like, oh, my gosh, she is paying attention to what I'm doing in my life. Like, it, I think that's a really big mindset shift when you're making these calls. It isn't just. Hey, I'm just calling a chicken on you and invite you to this client event. It's, hey, I saw this happen in your life. How are you doing with that? Or did you have fun? Or how are you doing, right, about that particular event? So kind of a tip in regards to staying relevant with the people as you're making those calls. Number four, um, home anniversary and birthday. Um, really, really important that you have these two touch points. In your CRM, you should have recorded the home anniversary when the house closed. If you're not doing that, start doing that right away. For birthdays, um, lean on your lender to get the birthdays. Or if you follow them on Facebook and friends there, you can see it under most of their profiles. Um, where it gets a little bit confusing is when you have a birthday and then a spouse birthday and like trying to keep that all just great is kind of a headache sometimes. 
Um, we used to do handwritten cards for these. Ann and I have since automated this a little bit. So we use Follow-Up Boss now for our CRM and Follow-Up Boss is integrated with a company called AM Cards. And so we created like a personalized hand, um, like kind of handwritten looking card that merges in their name. Um, and we have one for home anniversaries and one for birthdays. And so literally each week we have a list in the, in the um, CRM and it basically tells us whose birthdays or home anniversaries are coming up for the next seven days. And then we sit down there and it takes us about 15 minutes to review each person and then click send. With the home anniversary card and the birthdays, there's a little gift included. One of them has a $10 Starbucks card for their birthday. Um, so they can go have a drink on us. And the second one, uh, the home anniversary has a couple of like M&M Rice Krispie treats. So they have a little snack and treat in there. So just something that's nice. It costs, you know, about 15 bucks to send those. Um, but it's a nice little touch. And if you automate the way that we've done it, it can definitely be done pretty quickly. If you don't have a ton of past clients, it might make sense to do this manually. It's just pretty time consuming. Like before we automate this, Anna, what were you spending like two hours, three hours a week on this? <laughs> now like three hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now we do it in 10 minutes. So um, definitely a game changer there. Uh, definitely recommend doing that though. Um, you know, and you can still text or send them like a video uh, message on their birthday or home anniversary and just reference back that you drop something in the mail for them when you do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Last one, number five is influencers. I talked, I touched on this briefly a couple of times already. Um, I believe the best way to really develop influencers is to spend more time with people that are already referring you business. There's some people in your past clients in your sphere that will never refer you people. That's just not how they're wired. Like they're not connectors of people. There's other people that are great master networkers. Like when they believe in you, everyone and their mother is going to know about you. And those are the people that you want to reward. So for us, um, we do a couple of our events focused on VIP influencers. Like they're, they're just for those people. They're much nicer events. They're much more expensive on a per person basis. Um, but it gives us more time with these people. Like I said, 50 to 80 people oftentimes for these VIP events. The last one we did was at the hockey uh, arena here in Everett, the Silvertips. Mm -hmm. We did out the entire Octane Lounge and had 80 people in there. You know, it was fully catered open bar. I think the bar tab alone was like $5,500 because people were having a great time. You know, pretty cool. It was insane. It, it, it got a little out of hand, I think. Some of our clients got a little out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one is just the personal time and connection. You know, um, we will often have people like this out to our house for dinner um, and just spend time with them, making them dinner, um, hanging out, or we'll take them out to a nice restaurant like on a quarterly basis. Um, we try to, like, I would say every weekend we have a dinner booked with somebody um, where we're spending time with them. And they sure they're like good friends of ours at this point, but they're also influencers for sure that send us a lot of business. You know, like almost every week we have one of these happening. So those are the five that I think are really, really important. Um, the last one I want to touch on is just kind of a bonus. Um, make sure you're doing a market report video, guys. Like take the time to break down your market data every single month and predictably send it out to your sphere and your past clients. Again, if you want to, we talked in the beginning, like you need to establish yourself as the authority with your friends, family, and sphere. How do you do that? Bring them shitloads of value and show them that you know what you're talking about. So just simply put out this one video per month, email it out to them and watch the engagements. Like make sure you're using software that allows you to see when people open it and when they view it. That way you know when they're engaging. Okay. For those that are spending money on leads, I would really encourage you to dial in these five points before you spend any more money on leads. Like get your past client, your sphere business humming, get your process honed in. Then and only then go ahead and start spending money on online leads. But this is where all of your opportunities are gonna come from guys. This is so much easier if this becomes the foundation with which your business is built on. Jim, Ed, I wanna open it up to you guys. We shared a lot, but I know you both do some awesome things. Ed, you crush it on events. Jim, you do some awesome stuff too. I want to, I want to have you guys share too. What do we miss? Oh, I'll chime in first. Well, first of all, I stole Ed's idea on getting the uh, event set up at the beginning of the year and sending out a magnet with all three events on it. So we did do that this year, which was huge. Um, so that was one big thing we did. And we, we're getting more serious on the events. We're doing one at a movie theater that's kind of like a my kind of place, like the chairs are all broken down. Like, it's just like a lot of fun. Like it's just a cool <laughs> go to, um, and it's actually pretty cheap and in, in the whole scheme of things, but it's, it, it fits, it fits our, us and our clientele. Um, you know, and then we're doing a, we're actually doing an event at a brewery, um, that should be fun. And then, you know, pie day. Um, and I just find when we have these client events, like people just, sometimes they come to the event cause they wanted to talk to you about real estate. 
Like I've had people like, yeah, I, I, I or they, they call you and you call them after and said, oh yeah, I wanted to be there because I wanted to talk to you. So we always have a few like really serious real estate conversations um, at these events. And the only other thing I wanted to chime in on is um, the pa word past client because a lot of us think of past clients. And like I have a financial advisor. He makes money every year with the stuff he does for me. He sends stuff out to me on a regular basis because I'm a client. So I think as real estate agents, like we got to shift that mindset and they're not past clients, they're clients. You know, mm -hmm. once they become clients, they're always clients. And I know we're using it, you know, for certain reasons, but like mindset wise, really just think of these are clients, whether you get a paycheck from them this year or not, they're people that are going to refer you business, people that you, you are going to service every year until you can't anymore. Um, so just thinking of them as clients, that's my big two cents there. Yeah. Really good. Love that. Yeah, really I uh, I think I think it's important not only to talk about our events and things like that. One of the events we do is is uh, date night, which we just did two days ago or yesterday. I don't even remember. Uh, <laughs> it just flies by. We call it a reverse pop by event because we have all our clients come to our offices, to our spaces, and from a three p.m. to six p.m. We get to stand in our lobby for three hours and people come in and we get to one on one with them. And then we give them pizza and beer or whatever that stuff is. I, I could care less about the frivolous stuff. I care about the interaction we get at the time. That's the most important piece. Now you have to have something. So pizza, beer, wine, whatever uh, on a Valentine's date night thing, here you go. But to have them come to us, to get that interaction, I think is brilliant in a lot of ways. And we actually get to spend five, 10 minutes chatting with them. Uh, our team did that yesterday or the day before, I can't remember. Uh, we got five, five at bats with some people on listings and buy and all this stuff. So five things that we didn't have came out of that. And I think that's important. I think more importantly, not just taking care of our, our COI, our sphere of influence, is how do we build more sphere of influence? Uh, because we know it's the easiest business to have. And I, what I do is I start categorizing where I'm going to spend time. So I, I play basketball every Wednesday night. It's, I've done it for 20 years. I have sold almost everybody that plays basketball on Wednesday night a house, right? Uh, and new people have come and I'm selling them houses. So uh, my scouting background that I have, I know thousands <laughs> of people there. And I, and I, you know, I never thought about it when I got in the business, but those are all people that know and like me, trust me because of that. And now it just carried over. So my question, I could go on to church and boards and school and, and, uh, <laughs> question is where are, are you intentionally spending the right amount of time in the right areas to build more sphere of influence that's what i would challenge you on is is getting very intentional there and that's really like that's a that's a question that's disguised of, as where are you investing your time in community right um and, and ed you're doing like all these things with boy scouts and basketball and um, that's powerful. Like it's such a great point to bring up. Church is often for some of our clients, their number one sphere source, like Chuck and our team. Um, that's like most of his sphere comes from his church, but he's created himself as the authority in that church. Like if someone's thinking about real estate, they're thinking about Chuck because he's the guy that's established himself there. For us, it's like our jujitsu academy. Like that's where we've really established ourselves. Like we've got literally three transactions going on right now with people from that academy, which is super, super cool. Um, CrossFit is another one. Like I hate CrossFit, but the community dynamic of it is pretty cool. <laughs> like, I've had at least five closings from like past CrossFit gym communities. So it's, really it's gold. Yeah. So, you <laughs> yeah. know, Sean, go join a CrossFit gym. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and you, you talked about gift, uh, uh, gifting. And I, I think, I think some educational things out there would be the book giftology. Uh, I think that's a good book to to read if you want to try to perfect your gifting. Uh, I, I would say, for the most part, I think girls are better than boys at this. <laughs> My wife's awesome about <laughs> thinking about stereotype. This <laughs> I know, right? Uh -huh. But my, uh -huh. my wife's better at, at recognizing those little special moments where it's something unique and like you, Rachel, and and 
and doing something very specific for them. That that is so powerful. Uh, it's like the power of moments. That's another book I think you ought to read if if you haven't. Uh, it's creating those moments, whether or not they look like they're sporadic, they look like they're random, although they're not because we built systems on the back end to make those moments awesome. So those are two things I think fits in this whole whole spectrum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really good points, guys. We got about three more minutes. So anyone else that has something they want to share or if you have questions, this is your chance. Uh, I'd love to hear from a couple more people. Aldo, I see you hiding out at the uh -huh. end of the night events. Tell us what you guys have been doing. I want to I want to dispel something really quick because I think that um, some of us, some of us who have maybe not been the best at connecting with our clients that have sold or bought in the past years, um, we haven't talked to them in a really long time. Maybe they haven't come to client events, or maybe we haven't invited them. Maybe we haven't just connected with them. It's been two or three years since talking with them. Michael, how do you call them and generate a conversation out of the blue after years of no contact? I mean, I'm, I don't know if I'm the best person to comment on this because I just literally <laughs> say like, hey, Rachel, it's Mike Novak. It's been a few years since we caught up. I want to reach out to you and invite you to our next client event. Like literally that stuff. Yeah. Let's name it. Like, it, hey, I'm guys, it, it, it's way harder in your head than it is in real life. That's my point. We get yeah. caught up in our heads like, oh my gosh, what if they don't remember me? And what if it, and they might not. And it's awkward when they don't. I've had it happen, Right. Like who, who is this? <laughs> oh, you bought with me six years ago. Sorry, I haven't been in touch in the last six years, but right. So get out of, one of the things that um, I've used, one of the lines that I've used in that particular call is if you haven't talked to them in a really long time, you can literally say, hey, I was, I, I actually was driving around in your neighborhood and it totally made me think of you. And I realized that we hadn't caught up in a really long time and I wanted to check in on you. Like, yeah, I'll do the showing there you go. Driving in your neighborhood is kind of creepy, but I was showing homes in your neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was inferring the same thing. <laughs> one of the one of the ladies, one of the ladies I know that has been a big mentor in my life in the Kansas City area. Her line is "Shame on me! It's been so long since I've called you." And I, I, I thought that's pretty good. She she does a really Humble. good job. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Hey, can I mention? Can I say something real quick? Yeah, dude. Um, of course. I love I love this about Sphere. So Jasmine and I, we all like only work our Sphere. But I don't know who's on here and how many deals everybody does. But um, I think you don't have to make it so complicated, right? Like the $10,000 hockey arenas and stuff. Like that's awesome that Mike and Rachel are doing this. Not everyone's going to do it. Jasmine and I, we just did. So Rachel is my sister-in-law, if anybody wants to know. So she we they did a lot of this. <laughs> For us. So we just did a, a Valentine's Day pizza event and it was Papa Murphy's bottle of wine or six pack of beer. And we only invited 50 people and we had like 50 people come. But you you team up with the lender and it's like 400 bucks. So it was like 500 bucks. So the things don't have to be over complicated. So when you're you're hearing some things that Mike and Rachel are doing that are very super cool, like that's awesome. Strive for that. That for sure. That's what we want to do. But like some of these smaller things you can do. And it's not going to cost you a lot of money. I also think that a lot of real estate agents, we're so, we want to, it's so easy to talk to strangers, but for some reason, we're so scared to talk to the own people that have, that we've made tens of thousands of dollars on. And, so true. and when you're doing these events, a lot of us aren't calling our clients, which a, yes, you can be, or you should be texting them, but this is the easiest scapegoat for you guys to do is to invite your people for free beer, for free pizza, for free pumpkin pie, whatever it is, and they're gonna come. Our first year we did it, we had like 18 people do it. The second year was more, and like the third year now, there's like 80 or 90 people that are doing it. So don't be afraid if you think that people aren't gonna come. Some people you're just gonna have to reach out personally to invite them because they are scared of like, oh, does do they want me to come? Like they're handing out pieces this yes. only for certain people. So you're going to have to invite people yes. and don't be scared. This is the easiest thing. They'll drive up, they'll come in, you'll chat. If you don't want to call them every single quarter, this is the easiest way. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and I, you, what you named is exactly how I am wired. Although like I'll, I'll talk to strangers all day long, but my client, I don't want to talk to you. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea why it is that way. That's just the way that it works for some reason. 
I was, um, it's totally weird because like you talk, you call your past clients like, hey, what's up, Paul? That was great to hear from you, man. You call like an online lead, and they're like, what the hell do you want? You know what I mean? And for some reason, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so. What were you gonna say, Tara? So just kind of doubling back to like your sphere and getting referrals from like gym people and CrossFit and all of that. Um, super cheap and goes a long way. Sponsoring kids t-ball teams or soccer teams or anything like that. Mm. If you're sitting out in the field and your kid is playing or your nephew is playing or your friend's kid is playing and you're sitting there wearing a logo that matches what is on the back of their shirts, even if it's one by one logo, they're going to talk to you no matter what. So that's one that mm. I've found works really easy. And if they don't want to talk to you, they won't. And there's no pressure yeah. and you're supporting the small people. Community is I love key. that, Tara. No question. Yep. yep. You hear that, Novak? You hear that? Yep. <laughs> Johnny can borrow mine anytime you, you got, want. Get to <laughs> All right. We got to wrap it up and head to the next meeting, but it was awesome to see everybody. Um, we'll see you guys back here next Thursday, same time, and uh, we'll smash it up. Bye, guys.